Hey, everybody. Welcome to Minimal Fear. Maximum effort? <laughs> Damn it. That's dumb. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Minimal Fear. This is a little horror game by uh, Adriano Silva, I believe is their name. I'll put a link to their itch.io uh, down in the description. This is a, like, very, like, I think it's like a, like a one-bit horror game. I don't know how you describe it. It's, it's, you'll see. It's very minimal. And there's also a lot of reading, so here we go. Uh, boop. It was a rainy summer, one in which the unusual intensity made its way into the news. But I couldn't let it stop me from leaving that city for a few days. My mom lives in the countryside, and all I wanted for my vacation was to spend some days there, feeling the smell of the wet green surroundings ba bathing on the rainwater. Uh, on my way there, I pretended to leave behind my daily anxieties and daily pressures, but something didn't feel right as I drove by the shadows of the always-present trees. I felt cold, uneasy, ready as if uh, I were walking toward the unknown. As the or the same instinctive sensation that comes with seeing a dark gray sky before a storm. Anxiety, I've told myself, thinking how this thing managed to be part of most people's lives today. Yep. Hi. <laughs> but as soon as I tried to calm down, the engine of my car started to sound like something went loose inside it, shaking around everything around me and slowing down my car. As I couldn't drive forward, it seemed like the coldness of the rain outside came in silently and quickly. My eyes searched for nearby shelter, and I could see a nice old countryside house with lit windows. I left my car closed and made my way to said house, searching for something that could help me fix my car or offer shelter until the weather cleared a bit. But as soon as I have walked over a mud-covered path, the ground crumbled under my feet and darkness swallowed me. Anxiety now had a reason to double back or double its power and uh, let my body do the trick, converting it into adrenaline that would help me survive. <laughs> my body hit an underground old building, uh, cold as the rainwater, filled by gray silhouettes of discarded materials hidden in the shadows. I believe the adrenaline and discarded pieces of uh, mattress were the reason I managed to survive the fall without any severe damage. And there we go. Here's here's the gameplay. Yeah, let's turn the uh, brightness up for y'all. How you doing, everybody? Hope you're doing well. Sorry I haven't posted in a few days. I've just been depuessy wessy. 2020 has been a fucking... dick. <laughs> uh, look, I've survived this fall. I need to find a way out of here. Hey. This is so cute. Hi. Oh, him bloody. You. Do you work here? I'm, I, <laughs> hallucinating? <laughs> Me? No. I just, uh, feel from the roof back there <laughs> and had a problem with my car and didn't feel sa uh, safe staying in it, so I walked to the nearby house and this huge hole opened under my feet. I'm sorry, lady, but I can assure you you're not safe in here. Just look at me. You're bleeding. What happened to you? What is this place? This place used to be an old underground cellar. Then it was rebuilt into a compact research facility. F facility. Facility. <laughs> oh, he's silly. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, the room you fell into uh, still has the old architecture. The recent rains might have damaged the structure. I'm one of the tech guys in this place. I've used to fix and improve stuff that people would use in the upper level, but I had no direct participation with the research. What sort of research uh, could do this to you? As far as I know, it was only something about probiotics. Something to improve people's lives. It's hard for me to believe this is happening. <clears throat> Can I help you walk outside? We need to call an ambulance. Don't worry, lady. I patched myself up. And there's no way out of here. I've locked myself in here as soon as something started attacking us. This place is run by Dr. Francis. Is this like a Deadpool reference now? Uh, the coolest guy I've ever worked for. Always so uplifting. One could uh, notice his bald, shining head from the end of the corridor. This facility has no phone signal. Uh, we would trade messaging or messages among us using paper notes, of course. Uh, but we were always told these were measures to prevent the world from easily stealing research data. Today was a day like any other, until I've heard screams up there. I've tried to save my colleagues, but there was something there. A thing I couldn't find words to describe. It bit me. And yet, uh, yet I was the only one that managed to escape and hide in here. I can't leave you here like this. 
Uh, and I can't stay here either. It's freezing. How long will it take for people to find us? Knowing this place and how few people know about it, I think a rescue team might find us in a month or so. Our bodies. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, but I think there, uh, there's any other way. The lab went went into a security lockdown. Only Dr. Francis could unlock this place with the with his fingerprints, fingerprint or similar biometric key. It was built that way to lock uh, any invader inside the lab. In rare occasion, it has no one in it. Okay. So there's a way out. I seem to find this doctor you speak of and unlock the doors. There's any way to move inside the lab or is it completely closed? The inner doors are locked by codes and key cards. One could find them by searching what remains of those who worked here. Okay. In theory, uh, this could lead to Dr. Francis, but it's impossible to survive whatever is up there. I have to try. I can't let myself die in here. <laughs> and I'm getting, uh, if I get out, I'll bring help. I can't let both of us die freezing, uh, die a freezing slow death. Try and keep yourself warm in here. I'll go as fast as I can. Thank you, lady. Thank you, lady. I won't oppose you. I can offer a few more tips and my flashlight. As soon as you enter the lab, go find some gloves. You don't want to touch uh, what's up there with your bare hands. Read everything carefully. Please hold. <laughs> I'm just imagining this guy in real life just looking me dead in the eyes, being like, please, uh, please hold E to examine. Yeah. Uh, be sure to type codes correctly. Stand in front of the door. Uh, okay. I'll pray for your safety. Okay. Bye. Now, oh, he won't let me back in. Oh, I have a flashlight, though. That's neat. I like that. Uh, okay, so I can't talk to these things yet. Uh, elevator leading to the outside. The door's locked. Uh, locked by key code. Can't do that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't move when close. There's a shiny. I found some gloves. People used to take care of this gelatin thing. Now I can search for keys and codes. A weird red formation blocks the path ahead. It it looks like it's made of flesh. A wall of flesh? Like, is that a Terraria reference? It seems like a bacteria strain can spread faster through hemoglobin based blood substitutes. While in uh, perfluorocarbon, it seemed to drift for a long time before starting to form spores. Uh, from, now, from now on, we will only use the hemoglobin solution and test it. Dr. Francis theorizes the mix itself could be a miracle in cases of severe blood loss or infectious blood diseases. Yet the doctor wants something beyond groundbreaking. Uh, lock by key card. Uh, Basilisk substitute tundra, or BST, was discovered in Antarctica tundra around blah, 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 by Edmund blah, blah, and a team of researchers documenting the effects of global warmth. Uh, different from the known baculus substitute strains, this rare bacteria seems to have developed endospores that push its uh, resistance far beyond what we've known. It might also might have developed different antibiotic chemistries, uh, chemistry to match its survival uh, ability. And there's 5791 up there. Lock the key card. BST uh, has many similarities with known baculus, but it shines in differences. It seems like it developed a different behavior in order to survive longer and under harsh environments. Uh, this inactivate probably under harsh environment uh, this bacteria is capable of producing a variety of antibiotics and synthesize uh, conservatants in order to prevent matter from decaying blah, 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 raw meat fresh and cut leaves green bst would be ingested by a variety of living forms and released itself inside their intestines to resume reproduction and living in symbiosis bst can be revolutionary for food industry and medicine Hmm. Oh, I can type here. Uh, yeah, let's, I bet it's that, that number that was in that note over here. The mature culture of BST covers the entire moist surface of organic material. The biofilm it forms can only be found when exposed to light and remains unaltered 
in contact with varied levels of oxygen. Huh. So does that mean it's invisible until I flash my flashlight on it? The biofilm it forms can only be found when exposed to light. Okay. Uh, it should be fully capable of flowing through veins. We only need to adjust the correct amount of blood substitute in BST. We'll soon start the next phase of tests with electricity. Okay, can't do that. Uh, so what's the... What's that code? 5791. Uh... 5791... Uh -huh. Yeah! Six pieces of organic material kept in... Uh... Conservation by BST. Ew. One sample of living root. Dr. Francis and his team agree... Oh, puppy's mad. Uh, that our cultures of BST seem to develop faster if we warm up the air around it. But the natural underground cold of this region seems perfect for our project. There's no need to hurry any procedure. We'll keep the electricity tests with defrosted swine brains. Amanda suggested multiple tests involving chicken organs as well. Nine pieces of leaves, kept green. Two something eggs, kept at proper temperature to observe changes uh, to the growth of, uh, to the changes to the growing bird specimen. Zero chicken heart, okay. Get our tech staff to adapt some Tesla coils. We need to make our models transfer energy to our tools in a higher frequency. We'll be sending them the needed <clears throat> specs soon. Sorry. Uh, but we believe the result will be a continuous burst of electricity that might uh, be just what we need to get to our next step. Uh, eight different samples of fungus. You've upgraded the coils and will work on spare parts to keep them in case of need. Dr. Francis was really happy with the idea of upgrading the operating table to be able to conduct electricity. With these changes, you'll be able to use the digital panels to share energy evenly or apply the desired amount to uh, specified areas on the table. Okay. Can't go in there. So I bet that I need to go out to the next door and use this code. Dang it. I left my notebook that I bought. Not the living room. Okay. The fuck? Oh, it's all like squishy sounding now. Okay, six. I didn't write this on a napkin. One. One's like seven. Oh, nine. Ooh. Two, zero, eight. Sweet. Cool. Let's go to that next door and put in this code. This is cute. I like this. I uh, looked at his uh, Steam, or not Steam, um, Itch.io page, and they only have one other game. Maybe I'll check that one out after this. Yeah, there we go. Hey, buddy. What the fuck? Oh, it's just a thing of blood. A fresh chicken heart was more than enough to prove BST was completely capable of keeping an organ from decaying after being removed from the body. We only need to provide it electric stimulation to keep it pumping our mix of BST and blood st uh, sub substitute. The chicken will be kept alive and linked to an experimental machine capable of simulating its circulatory system. Probably. Uh, it's such a weird machine. It stores a vivid red liquid. After seven days, the heart is still fully functional, the BS but the BST in it made significant changes to its original form. Without any predator around to swallow the raw meat, BST developed a series of tiny filaments able to move, covering the entire organ. Gross. The millions of microscopic cylinders can draw humidity from its surroundings and convert it into a slimy liquid, making the filaments able to generate enough motion to relocate the host. The heart now moves like a slug. 
Bruh. That's fucking nasty. <laughs> so a chicken heart is just like dragging itself around. Red tank is link linked to this thing. Uh, maybe used to mix uh, the contents. Okay. I found a key card with his dead body. Dr. Sullivan agreed with Dr. Francis and proceeded to reattach the moving heart to the chicken. For the procedure, uh, this procedure was successful and the animal will be kept in observation to make sure it will be able to survive with the altered heart. The first hours of the procedure show absolutely no sign of rejection. So, like, the heart was moving on its own. They put it back in a chicken. Gross. <laughs> Fucking gross. Is it... There we go. Uh, the chicken healed completely, and its heart's mutations developed as the uh, BST found its way into the body and ensured its own survival in symbiosis. Chicken will be kept in... Huh? Uh, in observation uh, for its whole life. We can say it shows signs of a stronger immune system and vigorous mood uh, not seen before our tests. You're getting close to our biggest challenge. Oh, another key card. We are done with the organs, and we will be experimenting on dead animals. Jesus! If BST and electricity... Uh, oh, I wonder since that guy got bit, if if it transferred into him. We'll soon have a... Uh, if BST and electricity works as expected, we'll soon have a truck filled with pigs to be taken to a farm uh, with all their functions brought back even long after rigor mortis. Morris? Who's Morris? <laughs> uh, a lot of cylinders storing chemicals. Oh, what? Music's getting spooky. Nope. Okay. Did not like that. Fuck that. I hear the <laughs> the donkey. Okay, can't open that door. Where's the? Where was there another locked door? Do I need to? Maybe go to the elevator. Door's locked. All right, let's check in here. Was it the end of this hallway? This is cute. I like this. There we go. Am I on the other side of the giant slimy wall thing? I am. Angela lost her uncle yesterday. He couldn't resist another stroke. Uh, blood pressure deli- Ooh. Hmm. Are they going to use Angela's uncle? Uh, in silent fatal blow to a good person. Uh, knowing our secret, she asks us to make him the first subject for our final step into changing the way the world sees death. We'll bring him in, and I'm sure he'll leave this place much better than he ever was. Uh, oh, this bald head, Dr. Francis. That thing got to him, too. And he seems uh, too heavy to drag his body to the doors opened by his fingerprint. What should I do? Uh, let's go find some scissors. We have no samples of what BST can do to flesh. We... I didn't even see this note. We've seen it maintaining and repairing vegetable life in the form of a sticky sap. Hmm. Now we need to see if it can go beyond. Go plus ultra? I want to see if it can... If it uh, work inside the human body, but a body that no longer uh, hold a breath of life. BST... Okay. So basically this note saying we want to test it on... A person next. Please and thank you. Okay. So you need to find something to remove his finger with. Like, oh, here we go. A pair of sharp scissors. I have to use this. Yeah, let's go cut his fingers off. Intense. Was he was he in here? Was he gonna start running at me? 
And also, there's a... Uh, it's making that squishy sound again. Uh, there's that blood note on the wall saying, like, don't move when close. So what if I just stand there? I'm sorry, I talked over the snipping sound, because I really don't like... I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Body horror stuff like that freaks me out. Like the scene in uh, Outlast, whenever he starts chopping off your fingers. No, thank you. Uh, door is locked. Okay, so now I go to the lab. Down here and open it. Yeah, there we go. Hello. Uh, DMI, Data man Management Intelligent. Okay, this room is the safest one. I bet not even that thing can ooze its way inside yet this machine has been turned on. Uh, I don't know how to operate it, but it seems like the last thing it did was showing some sort of recently stored data. I wonder if someone was here before me. The text displays uh, displayed here seem to have been written by someone following the events before they lost control of the experiment. Uh, yeah, so the the monster is the uncle. Our test subject is John Wilson, age 55, dead seven days ago due to brain damage caused by a stroke. We've injected Mr. Wilson's body with a different dosage, uh, different uh, dosage mixes of BST and blood substitute, then substituted, uh, then simulated heartbeat for 24 hours. BST uh, spread fully throughout the body, and Dr. Francis proceeded to administ uh, administrate electric discharges as soon as the bacteria started to show biofilm humidity covering the skin. After the procedure, the machines were turned off and the body slowly regained life signals. Heart started to pump blood in acceptable... an acceptable rate for resurrection, and brain showed faint activity, working BST to reconstruct and, or replace dead cells. Test subject was kept inside the operating room in observation. BST shows, uh, shows signs of high activity after the interaction with electricity and bacteria seems to be working uh, the entire body in order to recover its lost functions. Electricity needed to reactivate the human body appears to have forced a defensive behavior on BST, which triggered a process of wrapping the entire body in a thick biofilm layer. The brain activity is still slow. Dr. Francis believes our experiment uh, to be functioning as a cocoon. It will open by itself once the body of Mr. Wilson is fully resurrected. The bone and muscular structures seem to be slowly attaching to the thick, uh, thick cover. But some of us believe uh, it might not be the case. The biofilm might uh, have thickened enough to make it hard for us to retrieve acute information. That was the last log added by them. Uh, after that, it all went to hell. Uh, that thing is a person? Or used to be? Something lost between life and death. I don't have time for this. I'll make my way out of here and call the authorities. Whoever can uh, isolate and contain this madness. Emergency lockdown turned off. Sweet. What? Fuck, did I just let it out? <laughs> No, thank you. Ah! You have to survive. Fuck. So, like, how far back did that put me? Is lockdown lifted? Oh, no. Then we went back here. All right. Let me catch up to where I was. Hey, I managed to get, uh, get to the elevator. The metal doors closed, like, hands, uh, and pulled me away from the underground insanity. I could feel the distance between me and the root of my fear, but something inside my heart kept telling me it wasn't over. Maybe it was the fact that there was still someone down there waiting for help. As soon as the doors opened, I was inside the same old house I'd been trying to get to and stay until the weather cleared. The building was hollow, uh, only there to cover the entrance to the lab, but had a mysterious item laying over a table. As soon as I've... As soon as I've seen the shape of a telephone, I've grabbed it and ready to dial an any number, but that telephone only had a single large button. 
As soon as I pressed it by instinct, someone picked up uh, my call and promptly asked about the condition of the lab. In a hurry, I've explained what happened down there, as well as what happened to me, and the person listening believed every single word, as if she knew there was a possibility of it happening. I was told to stay there, waiting for the rescue team. It didn't take long before I heard the sound of car engines. People came in, some heavy, heavy weaponry and gas masks, others in suits carrying a suitcase. The suitcase was filled with money and papers for me to sign. They offered me any medical and mental uh, help combined uh, with said compensation money. I'm glad they didn't just shoot me in the face. All I had to do is keep silent, tell no one about what I've seen, and I've accepted. I know their experiences didn't end there, but all I wanted was to be safe with my mom, uh, away from their next mistake. <laughs> that was awesome. I like that a lot. That truly was like a minimal... I just spit everywhere. It really was like a minimal horror game. Oh, here's my Discord. Hello. You should join my Discord. Mm. Yeah, you're going to get it by being a member of my Patreon for as low as a dollar a month. You also get videos for Patreon-only stuff. Yeah. Uh, I like that a lot. Great job. I'm going to check out their other game. Um, if you don't play it yourself, link's in the description. Uh, thank you for watching. Please leave a like. It really helps. And I'll see you next time. What, what was I doing like old jig? What's up? <laughs> All right. Bye. Mm -hmm.